Now, you may think that the global bestseller for BMW's M division would be one of the holy grails, the M3 or the M5, or in the current world order, the M version of some BMW crossover. But that's not the case. The bestseller is actually the BMW M2, entry spec M powered sedan. And the reason for that is its excellent price to performance ratio. However, its small size didn't really work that well in India. But it could now change because what we have here is an all new BMW M2. The M division calls it the entry drug. And this red pill is a larger car than the older M2 with a wider front and rear track too. And it looks nothing like the 2 Series Grand Coupe sold to us. It builds upon the 2 Series Coupe and has similar squat proportions. Its performance intent is highlighted by the larger air scoops and wider bodywork which don a boxier styling as an ode to the 2002 Turbo. While the bodywork might look boxy, it's mated to the curvaceous coupe roofline and the traditional BMW glasshouse with the Hofmeister kink. The headlights have a single hook each for their DRL signature instead of two. The taillights are stubby and there's a subtle bootlip spoiler. But the wide butt incorporating the quad exhaust pipes adds plenty of oomph. If you want something more aggressive looking and with a bit more poke, you will have to wait until an M2 CSL arrives later. As for the standard M2, it's made in Mexico and my color of choice would be this very red which has that Mexican vibe to it. Highlighting the German or Munich origins however is the kidney grill which distinguishes itself by employing horizontal slats and tastefully placing that M badge in a corner. Like the 3 Series, the 2 Series and consequently even the M2 have somehow managed to escape the BMW designer's compulsive need of putting large, outrageous grills on all modern Bimmers. Of course, it still doesn't look as elegant as a 3 Series or even the M340i, but under the stubby nose is a rather special engine. Take a look. Say hello again to the 3-litre twin-turbo straight 6. It is derived from the M3 or M4's B58 motor and only has a marginally lesser power output of 460 PS and an identical 550 Nm of torque. And it doesn't lag too far behind on the 0 to 100 time either. If you get your gear shifts right, it'll go from 0 to 100 in a little over 4 seconds. Power comes nice and strong throughout the rev range. It's a composed puppy at city speed and a hooligan beyond 3000 rpm. There is something evocative about six cylinders, isn't there? Especially when that engine has M garnish on it. Of course, this one doesn't have those eardrum tearing shrieks and screams, nor does it have overtly loud crackles and pops. But this soundtrack is evocative. But it will also give you big laughs, especially considering that it's not only the accelerator pedal that you have at your disposal to control this soundtrack, but you also have a clutch pedal and a stick shift. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> This thing is a riot. You heard that right. There's still a manual on offer on the new M2. The clutch isn't for the weak hearted though, but comes with an auto blipper. And should you accidentally stall the car while driving in the city, quickly depressing the clutch pedal will bring the engine back to life. And once you get a hang of the manual on a 450 horsepower machine, oh, it's pure bliss. The automatic will be the popular choice, of course. It's certainly more convenient and claims quicker acceleration times too, but the charm of a manual, it's hard to say no to. Heard of the hashtag save the manual? Well, the engineers at BMW take it seriously too. And in fact, they've had to put up a fight with the management boffins to convince them to let this manual, this six-speed manual soldier on. Because you see, the manual M2 only contributes to about 10% of the M2's global sales. 
And I'm also glad that some enthusiasts at BMW India decided to sign off on the manual option even for our market. And another enthusiast bloke decided to make this the powertrain of choice for this test car. So whoever you guys are, you deserve a pat on your back and a big, big thank you from enthusiasts like me. The other beautiful thing is you can make up to three more people listen to this soundtrack from this very cabin. Of course, the rear seat is ideally suited for kids or teenagers. And though there are Isofix style seat mounts, good luck trying to fit a child seat in there. The infotainment, like most new BMWs, features a driver-centric curved display incorporating two large screens and the new iDrive 8 operating system. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of this iDrive 8 interface. You know, it's a, I don't know, it's just not like what the iDrive used to be. You could literally just keep your eyes on the road, use a jog dial, control most of it. You can't really do that with this new tile layout and the plethora of menus that you have to go through. So, not a big fan of that interface. Even the AC controls, they are not the traditional controls anymore. They are all a part of the screen, which again means you have to take your eyes off the road. So that's not really a safe way to do it. What I do like, however, is the attention to detail. Like the fonts, for example, they are the same font that you see on the M2 badge on the grill. How cool is that? What I also do like is the level of customizability that it gives you once you get used to all those menus. The level of fine tuning that you can do for the engine, gear shift, chassis, steering, even the brakes. You can switch between Sport, Sport Plus, different kind of modes. You can fine tune all of those settings. That's quite cool. That's exactly what you want from an M car. This M car can go touring too. The 390 liter boot is decent and the front seats are comfortable even for long distances. And the rear seats, not too bad. 100 kilometer drives shouldn't be a problem. The ride quality certainly has a firm edge over the 3 series, but is exceptionally good for an M car, almost comparable to the M340i. And while we didn't scrape the underbody even once, you need to be careful over poor roads, especially with those lightweight M wheels. One thing I would have liked on this car, however, is a raise function. There are a few butt clenching moments that you'll have with this car. The ride quality is actually quite good. Even the ground clearance is pretty decent, but there are those tall speed breakers. Sometimes you have to drive off the road to get to a fuel station, and you have to do that often with this car. But it's times like those where you want that lift function to be available because it does scrape its underbody, not often, but on some of those extreme speed breakers and undulations. The M2's brakes need getting used to. Even in the comfort setting, they are quite sharp. I prefer leaving them in that setting for all of my drive. Ditto for the steering wheel too, because in the sport mode, it felt artificially heavy and lacked the connection offered by the comfort mode. And in that sense, the comfort mode made it feel more like a typical BMW. So along with a wider track, the new M2 also rolls on a longer wheelbase. And then you have staggered wheel sizes as well, 19 front, 20 rear. So all of it adds up to make it a more polished common tool compared to the outgoing M2. Now, some of you might call it a less involving car to drive compared to the outgoing M2. But I think the improved stability, the faster cornering performance will pay its dividends on the track and should you take this car to the track which I think you should you definitely should you will also appreciate the fact that you can fine-tune every bit of the car like I said and then you have these two M switches on the steering wheel so you can also save the settings to your liking as two presets or two hotkeys and dial them up as and when required and speaking of the track, you also get a 10-step traction control system at your disposal. And once you come to terms with the handling dynamics, once you understand the physics of the car, once you're able to get this powertrain set up right, it does feel like a proper 450 horsepower car. What I really like about the car, however, is the balance that it achieves. You know, typical BMWs, M sedans, they always try to achieve that perfect 50-50 balance. And here, even with that short wheelbase, 
course, it's longer than the previous M2, but shorter in comparison to the M3, M4, M5, etc. The way they've achieved this balance, you just don't feel that there is a heavy straight six sitting in the front. It almost feels like a mid-engine car, the kind of pivoting that it gives you, that central pivoting that it gives you, the kind of balance that it gives you through the corners. Oh my God. <laughs> it is so much fun. This handling is something that you can only expect with a BMW and an M at that. Unfortunately for the M2, its biggest competition is going to come from its own stables. People who are looking at a heady mix of practicality and performance are going to find the M340i to be a viable alternative to the M2. And similarly, people who are looking for a sportier form or some kind of theatrics, some kind of exclusivity, are also going to look at the Z4. But honestly speaking, compared to both these cars, they are very nice cars in their own regard, but compared to both these cars, I think the M2 is just at a different level. It may sit in a similar price band, but in terms of the performance, in terms of the handling that it offers, it just sits at a different level. It is a true blue M car. So you see, there's a proportionate kidney grille, a long nose with a straight six engine in it, a stick shift in the center, and a transmission tunnel in the floor that sends over 450 PS of power to the rear wheels. That's probably the purest, most mechanical sports coupe that you can buy right now. A last hoorah of sorts. As a petrol head, you don't need any more reasons to buy one of these. All you need is money in the bank.